Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to be with you tonight and to discuss my new book. This is one of the things that I love to do most, and it gives me great pleasure that I can share it with all of you. The book came to me in a sort of a haze in Harry's Bar in Venice. Harry's Bar is a small place, but it is, in effect, a microcosm of all of that great and beautiful city which has been so well described by those writers Ruskin, Sinclair Lewis, Byron, and others. The hero, if he can be called a hero of this book, is a young colonel, 18 years old. He was made a colonel no one knows quite how, and stationed in Trieste for his own sins. He is a fanatic at shooting at all things, including objects floating down the Grand Canal, and he has come to Venice to practice his, shall we say, avocation. In Venice, in Harry's Bar, which has become almost a sacred place to those of us who know it and who have enjoyed both the credit and the hospitality of Cipriani, he meets an Italian, or rather, should we say, a Venetian countess, aged 86. In the corner of the room is a princess of Greece, named Aspasia. The young colonel is mad about the princess of Greece, but still he has his countess and his obligations. The action of the book, ladies and gentlemen, only takes place during a period of 48 days, during which the colonel, who is continuously in Harry's bar, known to the local residents or indigentes as Ciprianis, is continuously drunk due to his own efforts and his credit with Signor, speaking Italian, Cipriani. For 40 of these 48 days, the colonel is unable to find his countess. She has taken refuge in the Basilica. Naturally, she is given full facilities there and enjoys herself very much, looking out of the upper windows and studying the action of the pigeons. During this time of indecision for the young colonel, who is on indefinite leave, by the request of his superior officers, he makes the acquaintance of a beautiful Venetian maiden, aged no one knows what. Some say 16, some say 17. Others who are treacherous say 18. She, through her powers of seductiveness, induces him to visit the island of Tornicello. The colonel is accompanied by his faithful black priest, who is his spiritual advisor and can almost be regarded as his spiritual manager. Together, they make a pilgrimage to this island, a very ancient, part of the lagoon which surrounds Venice, a town which I shall describe later after consulting my Bedeker. His love 
at first sight between the Colonel and Aftera. There is nothing to be done. It is a hopeless love, but much can come of it. And the Colonel takes advantage of this situation in a manner which might be criticized in certain circles, but which we will attempt to condone due to the presence of his faithful black priest, who at this moment has passed out. Aftera, or Aftera, as the name is pronounced by the local inhabitants, is indomitable. Nothing like her has been seen since Attila the Hun sat in the sacred chair of Tornicello. The colonel, who is an extremely devout Catholic, having only been expelled from the church at the age of 16, loves Aftara as he has never loved anyone in all of his existence. Aftara loves him as she loves the front page of Europeo. What greater comparison can we make? God himself is absent for a time, probably on his own business, but he returns to Tornicello to bring happiness to these star-crossed lovers. Aftera and the Colonel marry. But, ladies and gentlemen, there is tragedy in all of this. There is a tragedy that one can hardly say without having his voice break. Aftera is the victim of a heart condition, a cardiac condition acquired during her youth. The colonel cannot stand to see her die, and so he himself swims off into the sunset, headed, as far as we know, toward Chocha, a fishing port. Well down the coast, but the colonel can swim, and we hope that he can make it. This, in a quick resume, is the story of my new book, and I hope that everyone will buy it, paying three dollars, and the twenty percent of each of these three dollars will go to me. Two pay Galleretta and other people first, and then to go to the Fondacion Aftera, which is to commemorate that great soul who has brought us such happiness. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience.